Greetings to you all and welcome to Aladdin, a game that starts off with some fairly serious animal cruelty. This is Disney's Aladdin for the Sega Genesis. That's the Sega Mega Drive. And it's worth noting that the Snares and Sega versions are completely different games. They're both okay, but this one has that true, authentic Disney feel, as the film's animators were drafted in to work on the game's art. But uh, I'm not here to give sermons on gaming history, I'm here to fail miserably, so let's crack on, shall we? Difficulty, I'm going to play on normal because I'm a coward. I have no use for any of these other commands. Let's be having ya. I understand. Throw apples. Save Princess Jasmine. Got it. I don't believe she's in danger by this point. Nope, nothing's happened to her yet. She's just living in a castle. Or palace, I suppose. But all right, I'll save her. From her terrible fate. You've got to read fairly fast to get through this. On pace, with the text revelations. Except for that last line that you have all eternity to read, it seems. Maybe the game's waiting for my input. That seems more likely as time goes on. No, no, it wasn't. Iago. So this is our main villain of the piece. Iago the parrot. More dastardly and cunning a beast you'll never see. This is Jafar. He's a pretty good chap. He's very highly devoted to his work. I forget exactly what Jafar's official title is. He's some kind of consultant to the Sultan. That was more difficult to say than I expected it to be. But uh, yeah, he's a pretty good chap. And he needs our thievery skills because I am a street rat. And every street rat who lives on the streets of Agrabah goes around sword first. And what does, you know, your typical thief do? He needs to steal bread in order to survive? That's right. He slaughters the local militia. Just go with it. They're evil. Why are they evil? Because they work for Jafar. I mean, Iago. But Iago and Jafar haven't done anything wrong yet. It doesn't matter. Kill them all. Technically speaking, this camel killed this guy, not me. I'm off the hook on that one. No one would convict me in a court. You met him trying to convince the jury of that. Cause of death, camel. What, he got trampled? No, no, he got spat at. One single time. Okay, two things strike me here. First of all, that's a lot of pots. Very wasteful. Secondly, the more I look at that sprite, do you have two arms? I mean, we all have two arms, but it looks like it's two left arms I had to rotate my body in order to figure out if that was my left or my right. Don't criticize, okay? I'm sorry. It took me a while. But I've never noticed that before. It appears to be two left arms performing the same flinging motion. Maybe they're just really buoying them out the window with both hands, but it looks wrong. Now I can't unsee it. Anyway, let's not get hung up on that. Let's take down this guy's pants. Fantastic stuff. I'm playing the game. I'm collecting things. I'll explain as I go on. This is the magic lamp. What do magic lamps do? That's right. They kill everyone. Don't question it. Just play the game. This, however, is a non-magical lamp. What does it do? Well, it bestows the visage of Genie. Who's Genie? Don't know. We haven't encountered him yet. Can't climb this pole, it seems. Must be greased. I feel some pity for these people. Don't eat the apples, we need those. Like this guy here, he's just trying to do his job. He's just protecting the markets from street rats like me. And then I come along and I bonk him on the head with an apple and the next thing you know, he's shattered into oblivion. It's a wheeled world. That seems a bit dangerous. I 
just as you can see, this is a basic platforming game. Where the lovable rogue kills everyone that dares to stand in his way. All the power-ups and things, we'll explain them as we go on. Let's begin with apples. So in the bottom right, you can see I have 61 apples. Where do I keep all the apples? No one knows. But, you know, I'm wearing fairly baggy trousers, so that's convenient. Apples can be used as ammunition for a ranged attack. If you run out of apples or you otherwise don't want it, you've got a melee attack. With a... Cutlass? Saber? Cut? I'm going Cutlass. Why did the man just approach me disguised as a basket? I honestly don't know. I, I don't know if he's supposed to be a member of the guard, if he's just a child playing mischief. I don't know what this particular hand gesture is supposed to be, or why my hand has turned into a tentacle. But that's fine. If you don't think about it too much, you just look, look at that nice, fluid, smooth animation. Look at it go. But if you pause anywhere mid-animation, good lord. To be fair, this happens with films as well, so... It's accurate, I guess. Taking a lot of damage here. Let's talk about damage. Top left, you see Aladdin's lamp with some smoke coming out of it. The smoke is my health. I'm just going to vault a while while I talk. Smoke is my health. It flashes when it gets dangerously low. That's what we call a secret. Everyone pay attention to that. It was well hidden, right? More importantly, the merchant. He sells extra lives for five. Five what? Bottom right corner, you see those GMs that are next to the apples? Why can't I... Why can't I stop on... Hmm. You see those gems next to the apples? Well, those are used for currency at the shop. He sells extra lives for five. That's a nice rhyme. And extra continues for ten. That doesn't rhyme. I'm going to say for continues. It's important to understand your own shortcomings, and mine is an inability to complete old platformers. I'm going to need continues. Welcome to the bonus game. I'll explain it more later, but for now, I've got five tries, so let's see how many tries I get. Yeah. Genuinely surprised. Up goes the weasel, that famous song from Aladdin. Welcome to the bonus stage. Now, because I collected a booze icon, I get to play in a boo bonus stage. What is an a boo bonus stage? Well, it's simple. You get to play as a boo who can't throw apples because of his weak monkey arms. But he can still swing a sword. Yeah, I don't know. This is basically an avoidance. The townspeople of Agrabah will try and pelt you with their ceramics and if you can evade you get to pick up some gems if you evade long enough you might get that extra life that's descending from the top left when they realize that cookware isn't going to get you anymore they start throwing daggers at you and that's the end of me because i didn't see it coming Ancient beggar. The worst kind. It's like an evolved beggar. Look how ancient he is. I would like some treasure. Thank you, ancient beggar. I'm not sure why you're telling me this and no one else. Well, I, I know, because I paid attention to the story. But from the point of view of Aladdin, I'm very, very trusting. Let's go. Let's find the scarab. Obviously, you go to the right because it's a platformer. Aha! Apples. I think there's an extra life there. Normally. Maybe on easier difficulties. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm used to seeing a life there. I expected it, and it wasn't there. And again, I didn't expect a snake to be wearing a fez. So maybe this game's just full of surprises. Trying to come to terms with what this is. It's a sword. But it kind of implies there's a man buried under the sand. Which is concerning. It's either an elaborate form of torture or it's a... Ridiculous self-sacrificial trap. By the way, I don't like it. And the camels also wear fezzes. Must be some kind of mandate. 
Now, a secret, because we're in a Disney game and you see Mickey Mouse ears. What does that mean you have to do? You must wear the ears. Did I just wear the ears? No, I was nowhere near. Let me try again. Nowhere near, damn it. Fantastic. It's a pretty well-known secret. I think anyone who's played this game knows that one. It's iconic. It's nice, though. It's, it's very cutesy. It's very in keeping with the, the feel of the game, you know. And it gets a bit of Disney advertisement in. For shame on that man. No shame for that one, though. He just died on contact. You wouldn't have thought apples were that dangerous a weapon, but... Road signs? In my Agrabah? Wait, Agrabah's the town. In my... The Desert? Seems strange. There's a lot of water in this desert. I suppose that makes sense. I mean, the trees are flourishing. But I suppose I should talk about my backstory with this game a little bit whilst I admire these hieroglyphics. Fantastic. Are you trying to tell me to hurry up? But I was... I was going to take my time to discuss things. I don't want to discuss while I'm being heckled. I picked something up down there. Not sure what it was, but I said wow, so... Uh, Aladdin found it pretty good. So my history of this game is as follows. As a child, I rented this game from Blockbuster. Good old Blockbuster, how I miss you. The shop that used to be Blockbuster, I still refer to as Blockbusters, even though it's now a... It's a deli, I believe. Which isn't quite the same. But I still call it Blockbusters because it's memories. I may have killed Diago. Ah, well, these things happen. But yes, I rented this game from Blockbusters. I did the classic childhood rental. You rent it Friday after school, and you take it back... Monday morning, on the way to school. That's where you get to play for the whole weekend. Good times. My knowledge of the game, therefore, is patchy and primarily focused on the early levels. But, you know, it, it stayed with me quite well, this game, so... That means it's good, because it left a lasting impact. Now, you may have noticed this thing that we're chasing. This is half a scarab. It's very hard to discern what it is with your eyes when you look at it. At least I find it difficult. But if I pause and you look, it's the left half of a scarab. If you had the same thing flipped and put it side by side, you'd have a whole scarab. As a child, I never knew what this was. I just knew it was shiny, and when you touch it, it makes a happy noise. Then that was so that's a good thing. Nice work, Abu. Don't really understand the sound effect coming out of this guy's stomach. I do like the fact his mouth is opening, though, in order to let the sound out. Good touch on the animation. Also, this toilet is Virginie's only. These sound like minor things, but I love attention to detail like this. And I'll go back here. And these are toilets. I'll, I'll prove it. You've got the men's toilets, the women's toilets, the genie toilet, and some loo roll on the floor. I love these details. They're, they're just fun. They brighten the game up. Like how this hieroglyphic that we looked at earlier is actually goofy. Did you notice that? Because I didn't. I just realised it then. This game is really... Colourful. That's a good phrase. Anyway, I'll discuss the slot machine a bit better now. So, throughout the levels, you pick up these genie faces. You can see them on the, on the right. I've got four of them in the previous stage. And that gives you four tries at the slot machine. Slot machine, you can win apples, which is just more ammunition. Gems, which obviously we can spend at the shop. Extra lives, straight up. Or we lose. And if we hit a lose, we just lose everything. When I say lose everything, I mean all of our, all of our attempts. We get to keep what we've already won. But all of our remaining... Try on the slot machine and gone. All right, the ancient beggar has very, very poor organizational skills. So the cave of wonders is in the desert. One half of the scarab is in the desert. One half of the scarab is in the town, 
and the beggar met me in the town. So he chose to send me to the desert to get half the scarab, come back to the town, get the other half the scarab, go back to the desert to go to the Cave of Wonder. Why we couldn't just pick up this half of the scarab before we left, I don't know. Real answer, game designers thought this stage was too difficult. This was more of a stage three, and the desert was more of a stage two. Anyway, I'm going to be quiet for a bit now so you can enjoy Prince Ali. Because this game has Mega Drive renditions of the games from the film, and they're actually really good. So enjoy. <laughs> It's not Prince Ali. I got it wrong. This is um, uh, one jump ahead, one step ahead. Sorry, the first stage is Prince Ali. I feel I need to explain a bit because this stage is a bit weird. I'm collecting flutes in order to snake charm these ropes that are inside the snake pots. Why aren't they snakes? I don't know. But each rope is taking me somewhere. Usually to find another flute so I can seduce another rope. See, look, it's a rope charmer. Charming his rope. You may have noticed something beautiful there. So that guy is obviously a knife juggler. But if I throw an apple at him and it hits his knife instead of him, the knife will cut my apple in half and then he won't take pain. It's such a lovely little attention to detail. It's fantastic. No idea how I'm supposed to avoid that guy. Song's over. I can talk now. Observe this animation. Imagine what it might possibly be used for. What are you thinking? You're wrong. It is never used for anything. Aladdin has a push animation whenever you walk him into a wall. If you're thinking there's going to be a block or something coming up that I can use, you're wrong. It is never used in the entire game. Well, I, mean, I, can, I can force it to happen, but there's no practical use for it. It doesn't do anything. Dare you harm my precious apples. I don't want that extra life. Curses, there's a wall in my way. I don't actually know how to get to it. Maybe with a really good spring from this? Ah, we'll just forget it. Who in their right minds hangs their washing up here? This is incredibly dangerous and hard to reach. When I say washing, I mean... One top? A rug? One singular sock? And a tea towel. I'm playing cautious because of my health. I can sort of go in here, but not really. I can see my foot in the bottom right of my pushing animation, so there is a solid wall there. I thought there may have been a secret. My brain told me there was a secret there. I don't know why I did that. My brain often lies to me. Well, this doesn't make any physical sense. And then again, I'm on a flying rope. These little blue hearts, they are extra HP. Simple stuff. 
Iago? Poached? Ready for dinner? Now it's been a couple of stages. It's about time we fought. The first boss. Prepare yourself, imagine what it could possibly be. Think back to the film, perhaps, and then forget the film immediately, because there's nothing from the film. The first boss! Let's fight him! Fantastic! Good work, everyone. We got the Scarab. And when I say the first boss, he actually wasn't the first boss. Shock twist. He was a mini-boss. The first boss reel is coming up right now! That's right, it's Donkey Kong! Slightly reskinned. This seems like a fairly good rhythm I've got myself into. He's dead. Just like the rest of the town guard. Fantastic. I don't believe there's been an Abu power up in the either of the two previous stages. I I get the bonus levels that I'm aware of their existence, of which only two I know. So I'll get those. But if there's others, I don't know. That was kind of insane for the slot machine. Just kill them all, Aladdin. That's what we've been doing up to this point. Hello, Jasmine. I don't believe we've met. I suppose this is my first time seeing you, and I go, hmm. She looks a bit of all right. Wait, why are you defending me? We don't know one another. I mean, yes, you tell him. Why does Jafar outrank the princess? This doesn't seem right. I am now officially in love. But if I'm gonna get any kind of chance with the princess, I'm gonna have to escape from the Sultan's Dungeon. Now, the Sultan's Dungeon is where all the thieves go, and the multi-serial mass murderers like myself. So, of course, it's filled with people wearing Disney ears, Mickey Mouse ears, and mouse traps to catch Mickey Mouse, who presumably is dead. This is a song from the film. This is Arabian Nights. Okay, I've just realized something that I never knew. This is a Pirates of the Caribbean reference. The dog holding a key in its mouth, being seduced by the prisoner with a bone. This is a Pirates of the Caribbean reference. And if you're thinking, Ortega, you're crazy, how can this game from 93, I think, possibly reference Pirates of the Caribbean? Uh, it's referencing the Pirates of the Caribbean ride from Disney World. Or Disneyland, I don't know which. Which uh, is also serves as a reference point for the Pirates of the Caribbean films. And I had no idea that such a reference was here. I never really dwelled on the background. I remember getting hit by these spikes, so certainly I didn't focus on the background in the slightest. Anyway, I've already talked over enough of Arabian Nights. I hate this stage. The bats are so small. And of course... Interesting. A bat flying into you does equivalent damage to a man slashing you with a sword. Interesting. This enemy is a skeleton holding a bomb. He blows himself up. I guess he's already dead. He doesn't care. Yes, that's Sebastian. That's his name, right? I never watched The Little Mermaid. But skeletons hold bombs. And they blow themselves up, sending their bones all over the room. If the bones hit you, they hurt. How do you deal with that? You can either just hide until the explosion goes off and it's... Slipped like it was made of ice. You can either hide, that's your style. 
Or you can try and kill the skeleton before he blows up. Or you can just stand point blank and dodge the bones by doing this. Fantastic. That is the luckiest thing you're going to see all day. But there you go. There's an example of actually killing the enemy before he blows up. Just to complete the set. Now you're probably wondering what these drugs are. I don't think I ever explicitly said. These are checkpoints. Now if I die, which is very likely given my HP, I can restart at this genie face. What are we going to call this? An urn? An amphora? Let's call it an amphora, because that sounds fancy. A boo, motivate me. Genie, you don't exist yet. Get out of here. Keep. I will take a continue, my good man. Just got a wish. It's not very self-explanatory. The extra lives are very explanatory, but... I suppose if you have to imagine what could possibly cost twice the price of an extra life. It has to be a continue, right? What else could it even be? If it was actually a wish, it would make the game rather short, though. Also, the film would be shorter if Aladdin used his wishes a bit more sensibly. As with all these Disney-themed games, I'm resisting the urge to sing along. It's difficult, but trust me, it's for your own good. Also, I don't know the words. I know the basic first opening lines, and then I'm just kind of winging it. Let's not go down that road. What we should do, though, just for fun, momentarily, is we should examine exactly Aladdin's movement options. As you no doubt have seen, I can walk around like this. Oh, wait a second. Thank you, wall. I will push you to thank you. However, Aladdin can also move like this. That's right. Who needs leg muscles when you can shimmy? It's completely useless, but it's just tapping the movement button repeatedly instead of holding it down. This is quite a common thing in games. They have such uh, an elaborate movement animation, which looks really good, really smooth, really full and complete. But because of that, it has so many frames at the start before we actually lift up our leg. So if I just cancel before the leg is airborne, we can slide for all eternity. Probably should get these apples. I'm low on ammo now. When you die, your apples reset to 10? I want to say 10. Because every good street rat never leaves home without 10 apples. I knew that line was grab a carpet and fly to another Arabian night. I got that one. Anyway, let us exit. I'm feeling lucky. Honestly, that's a good outcome. If you get one extra life from all your attempts, that's a good outcome. All right, ancient beggar, I will give you the scarab I work so hard for. All righty, can't I put some coins in my pockets? Good lord, it's Iago. He was hiding inside the ancient beggar. He was just using me. He manipulated me. I think that conversation happened after I already left and entered the cave, so I don't know. But I'm being manipulated. Curious. 
So Jafar's plan is to disguise himself as Ancient Beggar, and then to continue doing the bidding of the evil Iago. He's going to make me go in here, retrieve the lamp, and then he's going to take it from me. And this is the Cave of Wonders where the lamp is stored. And I was told to attack the statues. This gem he's holding? Fake. Don't fall for it. This fish? I didn't think that was going to happen. And f apparently that fish lethal. Okay, those platforms sink. I didn't remember that. Another statue. Curses. We must attack it. No, can't attack it. Must be a friendly statue then. Going to be tricked by the statues. They're evil. All of them. I'm sorry, the water wasn't being very compliant with me there. Every now and again you might be hearing a little chink when I swing my sword. That means I'm deflecting a projectile. Ah, you just saw one there. Thank you, game. When a projectile is coming at you, if you swing your sword, you will hit it out the air. I was doing this earlier with some of the knife throwers. More luck than judgement, but I was doing it, technically. So I will take the credit. This is the only other Rabu that I know of. We'll take that and have another Rabu bonus. Those things coming for me now are ghosts. Ow. I didn't know where to go, I got confused. Dying right before a, a heart that I could see on screen is frustrating. But that's alright. Now I believe these statues attack you when you turn your backs to them. Yeah, that's it. So if you run through... Okay, when you're not looking at them, let's be more precise. So what's happening as I'm getting closer to the statue is it's still friendly, but if I step any further to the left, I'll walk beyond its midpoint and technically I'll have my back to it. So then it becomes active, and that's why I can kill it. But I appear to be directly on top of it. Do I need to recollect a boo? Looks like I do. It's probably not worth me going for a boo, which is going to get me killed, but... I don't know, you guys like to see bonus stages, right? You people are very demanding. And don't worry, I'm aware I place these demands on myself. You have nothing to do with it, but... Sometimes it's just nice to have someone to blame, you know? Come on, statue. Now allow me to give you a quick geology lesson. Oh, I'll give you a quick weapon lesson, actually, first. You get this incredibly good slash when you're holding onto a rope or similar structure, which you can't do when you're grounded. It's a weedier slash. But you do have options. Crouch slash. Like a little poke. Not bad. But you can hold up and attack to do this. It's useless. That's one button press, by the way. It locks me into animation for a long time. I suppose if bats are swarming you, you could do it and it might defend you, maybe. But I don't know, it seems... It seems risky just by how long you have to commit to the action. A day. Why, why would you set up shop inside the Cave of Wonders that requires two halves of a scarab to enter? How many customers do you get? Ooh, that's, that was a nice looking uh, selection of items you got in your coat there. But no, no, I'll find more gems. And if it's not apparent, this game uses the tried and tested purchasing method of standing over the item you want and pressing up. So it actually looks like a bit of a haggle and a trade, because you get to stand in front of something and go, hmm, hmm? 
and he understands what that means. By the way, there was a wall here a minute ago. There's no longer a wall. Why? Because I destroyed a statue in the top left. But how are those two things possibly connected? I don't know. Nobody knows. Boss music, by the way. It's a boss. It's a statue. Hit the statues. Settle in for excitement. He teleports between these two podiums. He takes a swing at you. I take a swing at him. Sometimes I miss, and nothing happens. Sometimes I hit, and I make progress, technically speaking. Are you excited? Are you not entertained? I don't know what they were thinking with this boss. This, this boss is just something or nothing. I'm being attacked by a carpet. He's po he is pointing. If you couldn't figure out what to do because you never watched the film and you didn't have any sense of exploration about you. He is using his tassel in the shape of a finger to point. Oh well. Alright, fine, I'll ride you. Now whenever Aladdin rides the carpet, he is forced into this Bruce Forsyth stance. My only option is to do it facing left or right. That's all I can do. Or I can jump off, I guess, but... I was enjoying the pose. Abu, you're not being very helpful. The cave is collapsing ever so slightly, but that's alright, because there's a magic lamp here. It's mine. Good news, ancient beggar. I have the lamp. Yeah. My luck is insane on the slot machine. Up goes the weasel. Abu in the cave. This is what Abu was doing the whole time when we were completing the entire cave. Abu, what was it like? Show me. Watch out. I can't remember this stage in the slightest, by the way. Looks like you just hide in the very corners and you're fine. Got it. I don't want those apples. You keep them. I should have gone to the apples. The apples are my friends, after all. Whatever, I got some gems. It's fine. Abu, you infidel! Wait, there's Abu saying infidels. I know from the film that the infidel... thing saying infidels is the Cave of Wonders. That in the background looks a bit like a... like a lion's head or a panther's head or something. Jaguar, maybe? Anyway, the cave is very angry at me because I took the sacred lamp. Which means we get to play The Escape. Behold. Probably the rest of the game you're ever going to see. I remember this game from my childhood as being insanely difficult. Because whilst I have health in the top there, look, it's kind of irrelevant. Because now the cave is on fire, there's lava everywhere, and if I miss a single jump, I'm dead. Just settle in, okay? Just settle in. We got high tempo, high pressure music playing. But I can just take my time, right? I can just stop and enjoy enjoy myself, even though the cave is supposed to be collapsing and I need to go fast. It's trying to urge me to go fast. I can just take my time, right? No. Why not? That's why. You gotta go, or the boulders are gonna crush you. The boulders are also one hit kill. And yes, as I said, if I miss a single jump, I'm just dead. And there's no save points in this entire stage. I know that. That's a traumatic memory from my childhood. If you die anywhere, if you die on the last jump, you've got to do the whole stage again. And you can see how close some of these jumps are. Oh dear. I wanted to go the high road. I think it's safer, but I don't really remember. I am genuinely amazed I did that so easily. As a child, I lost all of my lives and then multiple continues to this stage. I remember getting stuck on it unbelievably. So good news for me, in the over 20 years since this game came out, 
I've got better at platformers. It's amazing what 20 years of practice will do for you. Rug Ride. What is this? I don't remember. Oh, I remember. Okay, so I'm collecting apple slices. Because... You know, these are the special kind of apples that come pre-sliced. I think you can you can usually buy them if you go to the right supermarkets. Usually intended for children, I do believe. Pre-sliced apples, lovely stuff. And if I collect... One, two, three, four. If I collect four slices of apples, I get an apple. Oh, and in the meantime, I'm dodging, like, volcanic rock that's been thrown at me or something, I don't know. There's also a tidal wave of lava chasing me. But uh, more importantly, there's apples to be had. I was a bit misleading there, Genie, but all right. I'm sure as a child I found this almost imp- What the hell the kind of instruction is that? As a child this is probably impossible, but as an adult, apparently I have reactions now. If you're in any doubt, I can't press left or right. This is just an up and down game. The buttons don't do anything either. I, w I shouldn't comment on how I'm doing well. It's my loss. Maybe I'm just doing this deliberately to farm points. Look at me go. Yeah. But yes, I have no buttons here. I'm just up and down. Wow. And so child me would have gone, Oh my god, the flames behind me, they're getting closer, I'm so scared. But adult me goes, Well, that, that tidal wave of lava is obviously never going to hit me, because there is nothing I can do to accelerate. I can't go faster, I can't be slowed. So, it either hits me or it doesn't, and it's not just going to randomly kill me at some point, that wouldn't be very fun, which means it's just never going to reach me. So I now have absolutely no interest in that thing behind me whatsoever. But as a child, I'm sure it's very frightening. Does anyone remember what we do with the question mark? Because I can't. I think I changed from where I was. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna take question mark to mean swap. Also, rocks that come in the middle are just complete non-factors, because I'm gonna be top or bottom, always. I think I died at the same spot again. That low after the split comes really fast. It doesn't matter how many tries we need for this, because you get a life right at the start here. Yeah. And I'm never going to miss that life. Wow. Okay, so here's the plan. After the question mark, if ever Genie gives me the option to go top or bottom to avoid, I'm going to take top, and that should stop the point I'm dying at. That's right, i got a whole five-point plan for this stage coming up. Thanks, game. I mean, yes, I win. Good stuff. I guess that stage is technically a bonus stage rather than an actual level, and you only get three tries. I'm a little disappointed at myself, but the game seems pleased. It gave me the victory music while saying nice try. Swept into a strange world within the lamp, you know what that means. It's time.
for the best song in all of Disney. Maybe. I don't know. There's some contenders. But it's pretty damn good. Alright, that's enough of Friend Like Me. However, I do remember there's a line in Friend Like Me that says... I'm paraphrasing. It says something like, um... Try, try some of column A, try all of column B. And there they are, the columns. And I'm pretty sure column B is a pile of fruit as well. This song is so familiar to me that I think I can al almost remember the imagery shown. Those hand platforms I was standing on, I'm pretty sure are taken straight from the, the film. I think Genie does that at some point. And then Aladdin stands on it, or I think... I have a feeling Genie crushes himself between two of those hands. As part of his big display. And he makes this hand signal... ...with uh, little eyes and a mouth, and he uses them to talk to himself, as if like backing singers. Why do I remember this so well? I have no idea. Oh, this song's so good. This is this is real nostalgia for me. I mean, most of the games I play are nostalgia bait. Let's be honest. That's why I play them. But this is some real childhood stuff. Genie, you left me to die. Sorry, I was just enjoying the music. I should probably say something. I'm getting carried away. This platform is very strange. You sort of sink into it. I guess I'm walking on Genie himself. I don't really understand these platforms. They just seem to grow and shrink. I thought that one was solid. It's alright, it's alright, we'll get through. We just gotta go with a bit more speed. What Genie would have wanted. Don't like the fake out that that hand gives me. It is quite a tonal shift that I was just escaping a collapsing lava-filled cave. Genie, help me. And now I'm in Genie's bizarro fun land. But I mean, the film's like that too, so I can't complain. I suppose it's a big sense of relief, right? You think you're in danger, and then... Genie. Apparently I'm in more danger than I ever thought possible. Alright, we've got to understand these platforms. I think they're growing and disappearing isn't just on a timer or something. It's probably based on my proximity to them. That's a solid platform. These are not. Okay, let's watch. Yeah, 
It's two completely different platforms. The two on the left just spam grow shrink. The only one with actual timing involved was the one on the right. Okay, we learned. We're using our brains now. I can't see any further ahead than this, Genie. Stop singing about a little more baklava. We need to focus. I can't see! Okay, this time I'm just going for it. Screw you, Genie, and your plans. I'm going to assume if I just go at breakneck speed, everything works out. Damn it, Genie! What am I supposed to do there? I can't see the platform. I suppose I can jump forwards until it's on screen and then pivot back to where I started and just hope that my platform doesn't despawn. It's not a very elegant solution. It doesn't seem very intended either. Genie, why? How am I struggling so much on this stage? I don't even remember this stage being difficult. I remember Cave Escape being difficult. It's a good thing I bought all those continues. They're going to come in useful. So, all of these platforms, then, are potentially lethal. And if I try to preload them so I can see what's going on. The screen actually comes back with me and I can't see anything. That's great. You know, I genuinely don't know what I can do other than just go for it. I feel like I'm missing something, but I don't know what it is. That was one ambitious jump I just went for. Is there another route or something? There's a genie there. I'll go with the slot machine. Anything down here if I let myself sink a little bit? Again, a genie. I see that extra life. How am I supposed to get that? Unless column A isn't as sturdy as I've been led to believe. I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to do. I've never been so confused by a simple child's platformer. Okay, that was, that was on me. Oh, I'm willing to accept that. It was quite the error. And that's a shame, because I had a lot of gems that I didn't get to cash in. This is a very confusing part. I saw these platforms were coming down to me, and you just kind of wait for them, I guess. But for the impatient, this is a very difficult section. This is the balloons, yes. Preferably, if you could keep spawning the balloons, that would help me an awful lot. There was a shop here. I could have bought four continues from this. Well, now Curiosity's got the better part of me.
Oh, if anyone else wants to play this game, there you go. You know what I did not. May it begin once more. I did it again! Well, I just can't wait. My feet just move by themselves. I mean, it's not, it's me, it's entirely me. But... Look where you're going, man. S step one of road safety. These apples make an arrow and are positioned above a wooden arrow pointing in the same direction. It's kind of irrelevant. If you tap to the right, the camera adjusts for you. I didn't do it then for some reason. I don't know what I'm doing, okay? But I know now. I know, I know what to do. It's fine. So the secret is, if you tap right, the camera will adjust half a screen over. Because it understands you want to go over there. We can do this. Tap right. Tap right. There you go. Tap right. Tap right. And die anyway, because that last platform didn't open for me. Or is that last platform just small? I guess it might be. You know, one of these days I'm going to beat this stage, and then we'll laugh about it. No idea when that will be. Probably sometime way off in the distance, but still. Okay, last life again. I wonder how many continues I've bought. There's quite a few, right? About three, I think. I hope you're enjoying watching me get absolutely annihilated by Genie. Just for his own entertainment. I'm feeling... A serious sense of shame right now. At least we've got some damn good music to listen to, so it's not all bad. That's a new one. Perhaps this is what happens to most adventurers. They find the lamp and then they just get stuck inside it for all eternity. Consistent spawning genie, what is this mess? I can't even afford anything from the shop.
All right, I'm back to my own personal hell. These downwards is where we want to go. Just grabbing a brief snack with the apples there. Not going for that genie icon either, that's just gonna get me killed. Grow. It's just the tiny one, it doesn't even grow. Oh, good heavens. <sighs> How do I supposed to get that down there? You know what, I don't even care anymore. Column A, column B, I'll see you later. And I believe this part happens in the film as well, right? Doesn't Genie come walking out of Genie? He, he does his tongue-like steps. He comes walking down out of it. As if he's in some kind of Vegas show. It's all so familiar. Alright, the world's most difficult stage is complete. Let's hope the rest of the game is easy. Jafar's laughing at me. Fantastic, we're out of there. And I've met Genie. He's on my side now, I think. Ah, yes. It's time to seduce the princess with my magical powers. She would be in the Sultan's palace, that's correct. Princess, I've come for you. Sultan, what are you doing? Why did you build your palace from right to left? Are you a madman? Hello, Flamingo. Well, I can't make that jump, so this is my instinct. Fantastic. You may see a brief flash of light, or you might not see it, depending on which frame gets grabbed by the screen recording. But if two swords clash, you get a... You get a flash. It doesn't do anything. It's just neither side takes damage. So I suppose you can use it to... Deflect damage, if you want to think of it like that. Something you might be noticing. Die, Iago, drown! I don't know why we fight Iago so often. He's just a basic enemy in this game. But... I've shaved him multiple times already at this point, and I've lost a lot of health. It's this damn Cave of Wonders fish. It's back to haunt me. Carpet. Save me. I don't like the look of this. I'm going to start swinging like a loon. It was good. I... Iago! How did you respawn so fast? So this aren't even Jafar's personal guard anymore. These are the Sultan's personal guard. I mean, I guess Jafar would install his own men around the Sultan, but still. I'm killing them. There's not going to be anyone left in this city by the time I'm done. Except me and the princess. I can't reach you. Do me a favour and just stand there. Good man. That's too high. That's a fortunate checkpoint right before I die. I am impressed at how fast Iago regrows his feathers. I feel like we could harvest him at this rate. Just keep swinging. I actually would have died if I wasn't swinging there, because Iago would have hit me. How the devil did you get up there? He's a knife thrower, so I'm gonna get a knife in the back in a minute. Honestly, mate, what was this guy thinking? And the train guards with the cutlasses couldn't take me down. And the Rambo here decides he'll have a pop with his stick. That is a nice elephant, I like that.
How do you how do you get up onto these? Must be later. Maybe we backtrack through this corridor on a magic carpet, for example. Yeah, go. I see you camping the magic carpet. Let's swing in, man. This place is filled with dangers. The Sultan built some really high ceilings. You can see a very clear indicator there of me deflecting a knife. But still, this palace is something else. Look at it. This is the same room still. Yes, I did just kill that man by deflecting a knife into him. That is the thing. a curtain rail? What is this supposed to be? There's a lot of greenery outside. Considering where I'm supposed to be in the world, I'm surprised. We're flourishing quite so well, but I guess we're in the Sultan's grounds. He can probably pump the water in. If you don't know who the Sultan is from Aladdin, he's, a, he's the happy, friendly, rotund chap. He's a ja Jasmine's dad, I think, or something. I don't know. He he's nice. He's a good guy. He just has a bad advisor in his ear, that's all. Also, I saved a boo from a cage. Nice one, a boo. My legs are now broken. Nice one, me. That was a battle for the ages. A door, fantastic. A ghost, not fantastic. Iago! You swine! Taking a lot of damage. Donkey Kong's barrels are back, it seems. Alright, so this is a boss fight against Iago, I see. Can you go away, you stupid ghost? It's alright, Genie, thank you. It's nice to know you're in my corner now. Can these ghosts stop spawning on my head? Okay, they always spawn in exactly the same spot. On the left or the right, they can spawn. So there's two two spawn spots. As long as I don't stand on those, I'm all right. How do I? How did I walk up this staircase before? Looks like I could just jump up here though. Okay, that's fine. Now I don't have any apples left, so I guess we're going in mano e mano. Is it a mano? I know il mano. I don't even know which language I'm pronouncing incorrectly. I should have known Iago was going to be the final boss, though. It's the final boss, right? Maybe we should count hits. Three. That's five. What's the normal number of times you need to hit a boss? Eight. Let's go for eight. You look like an eight, Iago. And eight. How dare you still be standing, and working, for that matter. What a determined little parrot you are. Now I'm beginning to question if you're actually taking damage. You stopped spawning, so that's good. Oh no. You found the switch. So Yagi is running some kind of machine here that seems to be summoning spirits from beyond the grave. You wouldn't have thought a parrot capable of such advanced technology, but here we are. I lost count, but I feel like that was 11, which is a bizarre number. Whatever, Iago's dead. Mission complete. Aladdin, are you happy that Iago is dead? Hang on, he's gonna say it. Curses. Someone has stolen my almighty lamp, and I haven't even used a single wish. I'm the worst thief ever. Jafar, you must have stolen my lamp, I think. I don't know if you've stolen my lamp because I wasn't paying enough attention, but uh, I'm gonna assume you've stolen my lamp. Because I know you're friends with Iago, the evil. 
So far, your palace seems to be on fire. Are you aware of this? Well, I don't know about you, but I'm gonna stay up here. This makes sense to me. This is they're onto my plan. They've removed my raised platforms. There's a whole red tinge about this place. I know Jafar's colours are red, typically speaking, even though it seems to be purple in the cutscene earlier. But uh, Jafar is a sort of red and black kind of guy. So I understand the colour scheme he's gone for here, but... I think engulfing your own floor in flames is... Uh, it's just asking for trouble, right? And this is, this is Jafar's quarters. Firstly, it seems to be about the same size as the Sultan's palace. But secondly, imagine navigating this every time you want to go to bed at the end of the day. It's over here. This looks like a secret. Not bad. But can you imagine it? You just want to get some kit. And you've got to go through this gauntlet. Jafar doesn't look like the most mobile of chaps. Iago, you're dead. Get out of here. Those cobras in the background. Oh yes, yes. Jafar's staff has a cobra on it, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure. How could anyone have ever considered this guy to be evil? He has a red and black motif and cobras adorning him. If that doesn't scream trustworthy, I don't know what does. I probably want that shop. Carpet, take me to the shop. No! Carpet, damn you. You and I are gonna have to have some serious discussions when this is all over. Carpet. That's your name, right? I'm saying it with a lot of venom. I don't know why. I, I like you, Carpet. You're my friend. What a jewel. Place your bets. Also, before you place your bets, understand that he can't reach me, because I outrange him. Nice try, statue. I love the stick, guys. In a game logic sense, a stick is as good as a sword, right? A hit is a hit, but... Trying to suspend disbelief and imagine this game with a sense of realism. What is stick man gonna do when your average stick rat has got a sword? Well, I say a sword, but it looks more like I've got a tail. Look at that thing flop. Maybe my sword's made of rubber. Well, I, I want to go up this cord. This giant curtain pull. Is there a reason why Jafar has these things? There's a strange interaction. So what happens with that guy normally is if you throw him an apple at him, on certain timings he dies, on certain other timings his, his trousers fall down. I don't know why. But uh, I reflected a knife. And that hit him and made him drop his trousers. I'm not sure where the knife hit. We'll assume it cu perfectly cut off his belt. It's a one in a million shot we pulled off there, but we did it. Oh, wh what is this statue? It looks like an elephant butt. It's a strange piece of interior design we've gone for. How do you have multiple Iagos? Explain. Where am I going? Just keep swinging. Why am I sliding? Why is this fire-covered floor suddenly icy? Right, I'm just gonna throw apples at you then. That's worked on everyone else. Seems to be working again. Right, you're sucking me in. That's what's happening here. I understand now. Some kind of magnetism, perhaps? Seems to be going for the sword rather than me. Is that Cobra Staff? 
The game hasn't made this particularly clear, but that's Jafar. You saw him in one cutscene, when he wasn't disguised as an ancient beggar. Honestly, ancient beggar plays a bigger role in this game than Jafar. And based on this, I would say ancient beggar would probably be more, a more difficult boss fight. Because this isn't taxing me. Hello! Ah yes, I believe this happens in the film, right? Jafar gets the lamp and he uses it. He uses a wish on himself to transform himself into this powerful... ...giant fire cobra. I mean, he likes cobras, he's got a thing for them. I could try and slash him with the sword, but... I notice these apples are replenishing... ...on either side of him, so I'm just gonna keep doing this. This is a workable plan. Unless Jafar gives me a reason to change tact, I'm just going to stick with this. Imagine the disgrace, though. You're a powerful wizard? I don't know what... He's dead. Right. You're a powerful wizard, I think. I don't know what Jafar is by default. And then you use the power of a genie to make yourself even stronger, and you lose to a dude chucking apples. Jasmine loved it, though. I loved the way you brutally murdered that man. With apples. Me mine forever. Sure. Would you like me to show you the world first on a magic carpet ride? No. No, that's alright. I saw what you do to people that you don't like. And I saw you still had some apples left over. And I'm not messing with that. Aladdin, I love you. What a beautiful story. I've been Artigo Omega. This has been Disney's Aladdin for the Sega Genesis. The better of the two Disney games, if you ask me, by quite some margin. It's a childhood game, it's a nostalgic game, and it's surprisingly good. It, it's not the best game I've ever played in my life, but it holds up very well. The, the animations, the graphics in this game are still really, really good. You can tell that a lot of effort went into the animations. Some of the level designs are a bit silly. Some of the bosses are a bit weak. So there's always room for improvement in these things, right? But at the end of the day, it's a good game. It's a game a lot of us have memories of, and for good reasons. And also it invokes the film, which I'm going to assume resonates with a lot of people as well. I've been Artega Omega. If you like colorful, Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis platformers, then why don't you go and take a look at Earthworm Jim. That's another game I played through recently that I struggled with substantially more than this one, but it's a very similar game. It's very bright, colourful, zany. Made by the same people, I believe, or published by the same people. But very good, very fun. I'll put a link up in the uh, outro video if you want to check it out. Hopefully you'll join me for that, and I shall see you then.